Hi, I'm Amy Chu. I am a comic book writer. Um, I um, have written comics for uh, probably just about every publisher you've heard of, um, DC, Marvel, um, IDW. Just, you know, I, I also teach at the Kubert School. So um, I guess what I'm here for is to um, give you a little taste and a little introduction um, as to how you go about writing comics and just um, kind of about my process. Now, just remember, the way I do it is not necessarily the way everyone does it, um, but I think there is a common element in terms of um, how you go about um, writing comics. Now, I'm going to assume, for the most part, uh, maybe you've tried it before, maybe you do write comics already, that's fine. This is just an, um, a walkthrough of how I go about it, but also maybe you're, you're an artist or you're an aspiring artist, you're an aspiring writer, maybe you're a screenwriter. Um, so I'm going to try to make it kind of general in terms of how you go about thinking about writing comics, because writing comics is very different. It's not the same thing as uh, writing prose, writing an essay, or writing TV. Um, there are some similarities, of course, but uh, for the most part, I, I wanna talk about how you have the proper mindset when you're writing, okay? Um, let me just show you a little bit too of, um, you know, um, some comics, you know, so uh, this was actually my first story, Wonder Woman, um, which got collected in this lovely, you know, uh, um, the purpose of doing this too, by the way, is to show you there are different formats of comics. So that makes a difference in how you go about writing, you know, how you're going to think about your script, because what you're going to do is uh, you're going to come up with a script unless you are drawing your own comic and maybe you don't have to do it that way. You don't. Some artists do write a full script. Some artists will start thumbnailing drawing and writing as they go along. But whatever the case is, you need a structure and you need a roadmap of where you're going with your story. So that's that's my purpose here today, is sort of give you a glimpse of that. Um, so some of the things that I've written, again, uh, and it's different, right? This is um, like this. Um, my first trade book was Poison Ivy. So six issues, 20 pages each, you know, um, uh, combine into one volume, that's a different story structure. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Now let's go back to, um, you know, when I started breaking in in my um, self-published stuff. So this is the collected edition of all the short stories. I'm going to talk to you guys about how you go about writing a short story, because I think that is a little bit easier. I think a common complaint for people is like, well, where do where, how do I start? It's the blank canvas problem. I have a universe. I have these cool characters, but I just don't know where to start. So let's start small first. You're not going to start with Lord of the Rings, okay? Uh, we're going to start because this is a this is a craft. And um, a little bit about myself, by the way. Uh, I, um, I I I did not start off as a writer. I did not study writing. Um, I'm coming from a business background. Um, and my friend wanted to be a writer and I just wanted to help her and I kind of got sucked into it. And what I found was that um, basically what I'm trying to say is if I can do it, you can do it too. With work, you have to work at it. You have to work at the craft. But I don't really believe that, oh, you know, we, we just get shot out as like, OK, a talent that comes out and like all of a sudden, you know, I'm a, I'm a writer. I, I, I do write full time. I like to think of myself as a good writer. People like to read what I write, but I didn't start off that way. I learned it and I um, worked on it for years and I got to where I am because I, I do believe that you can do this too. Absolutely. Um, but with understanding and with the proper respect of the medium, please, you know, because um, what you're doing, what you're doing is you're writing a script, not for the reader. And some of you may know this, and that's fine. I'm just reiterating that you are not writing for the readers. You are writing a script for an artist to draw or the team of artists. In that sense, it is very similar to a screenplay for TV or features, is that the end reader or viewer doesn't actually see the document. So that should change how you go about your writing. You know, what you're writing is kind of a blueprint for everybody to work off of, which means you need to be thinking about it slightly differently in terms of the detail, the structure, et cetera. Now, maybe you're writing for yourself, like I said, and that's different, but you'll still need to think about how you're going to structure and pace your story. So hopefully this is giving you a little bit 
of a different idea of like how, you know, writing for comics, which is honestly the best thing. It is simply the best thing to be able to produce, write and produce your very first story. Um, there's nothing like it. And when you see it actually come out. So I feel like, I feel like I'm doing this because I want you to do it. You should, you know, you, maybe you've been thinking about this for a while, you know, hopefully not years, just go ahead and do it. Okay. Um, and the way I, 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 let me, let me sort of talk to you about how I go about it. Um, in the, um, right now I'm actually working on a 10 page story for DC. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what's going on, probably because I can't tell you quite yet, um, but um, the constraints, you need to know what you're writing for. In this case, it's 10 pages, okay? So um, you may be like, okay, well, it's my story. Um, I don't know how long it is. Uh, think about it like a freelancer like myself. You're usually given an assignment. Your average American comic book is gonna be 20 pages. Uh, that's great. I'm gonna say if you don't have an actual deadline or whatever, start small. Think about the medium, okay? Um, you, now, you may also wanna start off with a web comic because hey, you don't have to pay for printing when you're doing a web comic, okay? So you can do that too, absolutely. That's slightly different, um, but what I do start my students off with at the Kubert School is an eight page comic. And why eight pages? Eight pages is a great start um, because it's enough pages where you can tell a proper story, introduce characters, throw a little action in and feel like you got something done. And that's generally what's called an ash can too, because what you can do if you desire is to print that document up and use it to get more work, to show people, uh, maybe even to get published in an anthology. Um, eight pages, I think, is just a good place because it gives you some limitation of scope, but also you're gonna have some satisfaction. If you can do eight pages well, it shows, if, if you're trying to get freelance work from somebody, that you, you can also tell a good story in eight pages, and that's super important. Um, so just to get you started too, is what I generally do with um, students is, it helps to visualize the eight pages. So if you take, say, two pieces of blank paper and fold it in half, okay, like so. You can do this with me if you want. Um, this is your comic book. This is your comic story, okay? So th it helps to visualize. Um, you know, I, and again, you don't have to do it this way, but I think it is very helpful because what we're doing is writing a script that fits within physical real estate, okay? This is approximately the uh, proportions of an American comic book. Um, perhaps you're also thinking manga or whatever, or something slightly smaller, um, middle grade. The, 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 the page size is slightly smaller, and we'll talk a little bit about how they may, that may change your story. But I don't wanna confuse you too much. You can start off with this, and this, this is easy, and if you do this, and say you're an artist, go ahead and draw it. You can draw it as you go along. Maybe start off mapping it in pencil, okay? But this will give you an idea of um, how the reader reads the story. Now, of course, I like print. Um, I am. I, I feel like the experience of reading a printed book or a printed comic is different from digital. If you're doing a digital web comic, the experience is, is different. Now, in a lot of cases, um, it's going to be both. That's the thing. We're sort of in a world where you can you can get your comics in any format. Um, so just think about that too, because ultimately it is about the reader experience and how they're experiencing your story. Okay. So, but if you start off with this, this is a good start because then you have what do you have? You have page one, and then here's what you have: page turn, page two, three, four, and so forth. So you can number it as such. There are certain things that are also kind of cool you can do in printed comics. You can do what we call the double page spread, right? You know, this you can tell a different story here. And if you're an artist, you should get a little excited because this is always fun, right? But the main thing I want to uh, have you remember is the user experience of that. If you were in American Western, you know, not, not Japanese, but re starting from here, your eye is going to read and go down this way, and then you do the page turn. So always remember that as you're coming up with your script, because that's going to be important in terms of if you're going to do the reveal, the surprise, all these are the tools and the craft of being a good um, script writer. So just remember that, okay? Um, so if you can start off with this, this is a good way to go about it. I don't really do this 
anymore. I started off doing this because it's, again, it's very helpful. And it doesn't matter if you don't have any artistic inclination, you can really do your own thumbnails. And this is very important because as you're writing your script and you're describing all these wonderful things that are happening in your story and you've got like the huge Coliseum with all the horses and this person's doing this and that, you gotta think, can the artist draw it? Can it actually work? You know, is it is you know, think about it, uh, think about it like a camera to a perspective while you're describing it. Is it going to work on the page? Okay. So um, so this is a great way to start off. What I do now is um, I, I go to the next step, okay? I'm sort of diving here a little bit into tools. Now I've definitely had some people ask me, so what do you use? Do you use Final Draft? You would, you don't need to do all that. You just need a word processing document or as simple as a notebook, okay? You can start off with a notebook. I usually try to start off this way. Um, and I literally will do, uh, let's say we're doing an eight page story. Okay, this was actually a 10 page story for um, DC, um, for Wonder Woman. And you see how I, I numbered the pages down here. This is the outline stage, because now I'm like, how many pages do I have? Because I need to sort of figure out how to put a story into that space and that's gonna fit. The biggest problem I think you when you start off uh, writing is my story is so epic, how am I gonna fit it in? Okay, th that's, that's kind of the reality check. Is it is it the right story for the space I'm allotted, the number of pages, my little, my little ash can here, okay? That's going to determine also how good your story is. Now, again, the sort of, little tell of a more recent, you know, um, comic book writer is trying to cram too much story in too little real estate. So uh, think about that. Think of it as the right story for what you're going for. Um, you know, the, the worst is, and if you're a reader of comics, you will see this where all of a sudden there's so many panels in there. It just feels rushed and you just know. Yeah, think about it like um, composing music, okay? And you know when st you know that you sort of need to give the story the natural rhythm it deserves. So think about it like that, um, and give it some proper space. All right. So let's talk about okay. I'm the ten pages I'm talking about with um, DC, and for example, I'm naturally going to focus a little bit on um, superhero because that's kind of what I do mostly these days. I've written you know, Wonder Woman, Poison Ivy, uh, a lot of Red Sonia, Green Hornet, I've, you know, um, Deadpool, I've done just a little bit about everything now, okay, um, is thinking about what's for, like, for 10 pages. 10 pages is good, again, because it's slightly more than the eight pages. It gives me a little room for character development, um, and it gives me enough to do a sort of beginning, middle, and ending, all right? So when you're writing your script, and again, I'm sort of using this kind of as a, um, you know, maybe I, I'm sure you're, you're watching this because you want to write, okay? So part of the process of writing is actually getting it down, okay? So that's super important. But think about your ending. You're doing a beginning, middle, and end, and the real difficulty I find for most people is like, I don't even know how to end it. You really need to give the ending the same consideration or respect that you have with your opening. I, I think a lot of people start off with the opening and they're like, oh, that's super cool. This is how we're going to start. This is how my character is going to, I just don't know where to go. I don't know how to end it. Okay. You got to sort of think ahead, fast forward, and just think about the ending. And with the ending is to me, for my process, the most important part is like, do I have an ending? If I don't have the ending, I don't really feel like I have a story. Okay. Um, so I, I put my efforts there first and foremost. Um, I will do the ending and part of the ending, and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about why this is so important in terms of how you go about writing a script for an artist is how is the reader going to feel after they finish the story, put it down and walk away. You know, what kind of story, what kind of feeling do you want to give them? What is the tone of the story? You want to feel like, awesome or you know like oh this is something to think about these are big themes you know big societal themes you know that's up to you as the writer but you do need to think about that and um you know and then work backwards it's that simple um so i do i generally start with the beginning first 
Obviously, you don't have to do that. Um, but my assumption is for a lot of people is that they already kind of have an idea where they want to start. Now, don't forget when you're writing, um, you're going to be doing revisions. You are going to be doing revisions. That's why at the Cuber School, I teach a layered approach, you know. Don't get hung up. I, I, every word has to be perfect. Every word has to be beautiful and it has to be correct. I always start off exactly outline. You know, you figure out the structure, you figure out the pacing. I would jot down and I start massaging the story in, okay? I start working out the story. Now, how does one go about coming up with story ideas, okay? Um, this is... Uh, this is something where, I, again, I don't think this is um, rocket science, all right? Uh, I think what happens to us as adults is that we lose that ability as we grow older because we're sort of taught to, you know, learn things in, um, in a very formalized way. Because um, kids have ideas all the time, right? Kids, kids do all sorts of things. And I think what happens is that we lose that ability to think like a kid. And um, so what I'm trying to tell you is to get ideas is a little bit like freeing yourself of all the things that, kind of, that you kind of learn and um, resurrect that kid-like quality of intellectual curiosity, of observing things and noticing things and things that might be interesting to you and just um, jotting those things down. Again, in your notebook or your phone, whatever works for you. Um, this is how I get ideas. I get ideas basically by watching, observing people um, and reading. Okay, so um, I used to live in New York City. The subway is a great place to get like just ideas because you see all sorts of people down there. If you're living in a vacuum, especially now, you know, you're stuck at home, you're not really, you know, try to get out. You walk around and start observing things, start reading. Um, I get a lot of ideas just from especially, um, you know, uh, technology review or, you know, the economist, stuff that, that's a, Global thinking, forward thinking, new ideas, new technology is always very, very cool. Um, or, you know, shocking news, people news. You know, like there's always something that happens where you're like, what What was that person thinking? You know, like you try to get inside their head and maybe there's a story there or there's a character there. Okay. And so what I do is if there's a, something just interesting, I jot it down really quickly because it's of interest and maybe I can save that little scrap for later on for a story. So um, back to tools. I I use a cloud-based um, little notebook, um, Evernote. You know, you don't have to use that. Use something which um, you can, you know, do something on the fly. And maybe that's just like a little journal too. Uh, write down, write it down. Because uh, I think there's some people who say, oh, well, if, if, if it's really good, I'll remember it. Um, I don't find that's the case. I just, <laughs> just put it put it down so you can revisit it later on. If it is a really good idea, it, it will still come back to you. But what you want is a whole lot of ideas. So just try to keep jotting and practice keeping a kind of a free mind, looking out, you know, a childlike mind, you know. Um, and that's where I think sometimes you get your best ideas. OK, not necessarily by saying, OK, what what's popular now? You know, it what I found is that if your heart's not into it, it's just not going to be a great story and you're not going to be as motivated. So please just try to do something that you really are thinking about. You really want to write. It's the story you want to write, not what you think could sell or what's popular or whatever. OK, um, so the flip side of that, of course, is that maybe that story is a zombie or vampire story. And somebody's like, oh, it's been done to death. You know, write what you want to write. OK, just do if it's a good story, you will do a good story. All right. So just just work on that. OK, so that kind of leads me to um, your characters, your characters, because Here's the other thing, again, you could sort of think about, well, it's cool, what if I did this, this, this plot thing? Um, I do think you need to start with your characters, okay? In your characters, there is um, a natural tendency to start off with the hero, the anti-hero, the, anti the, um, the protagonist, okay? Um, just to prevent this from happening, because this is, this is where you end up with, you, you want 
your protagonist, absolutely. But the supporting characters and antagonists are very important for you to make a good story. Otherwise, just this person being cool and perfect and doing whatever. Think about, first of all, what are their weaknesses? And the antagonist and the supporting characters. How does that all play out? Okay, because what 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 drives what 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 drives stories? Conflict. Something happens. Something has to happen. Okay, um, and so give that some thought too as you create your cast of characters. You know the 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 what is what is what are their motivations? Very important because why are they doing that? Why why? It, it, this is what you'll find coming back to, and this is what I'm doing right now. It's like, wait, what? Why are they doing it? it was, sure, it seemed cool at, at the beginning, but, and this will come back to haunt you, is that somebody who reads your story say, yeah, but why? Why is this happening and why are they doing that? So if you cannot address it yourself, somebody who's reading is gonna be wondering that. So try to figure that out. You do not have to explain everything to everyone at all times because the beauty of comics is that it's audience participation. You know, we the way that somebody's going to read your comic, uh, read your writing, is to immerse themselves and to participate. And the way they do that is is in the gutter, is in the in between. It's that they're there and they naturally figure out what's going on. You want to do that. You don't want to tell them every single little detail. So hold yourself back. You don't have to explain everything, but you need to explain enough so that they understand what's going on and they're there for the ride and that they do want to turn the page or they want to do the screen swipe. And that's the real challenge of being a writer is to keep them going, keep them going until the end. And then when they put it down and they walk away, they're like, let me reread that. You know, it was so cool. Or or there was something they're like, yeah, let me read it again because I was like, what was going on there? And they read it again. That's a real trick when you know that you got something is that, you know, if they don't, there's so much out there. There's so much out there that nobody's required to turn the page for you. So you do want to get that and get them into it. So um, how does one do that, right? Uh, I sort of mentioned a little bit about the tools and I'm kind of blowing through this super quick, I know. Um, if you can, obviously, there's so, there's so many resources out there. Um, you know, uh, Cuber School offers online courses, of course, uh, but with the full-time, pro the full-time program is really geared towards storytelling. Storytelling is the, um, the real test of everything in terms of uh, the visual narrative and um, how good you are as an artist. So I, I do think that when, you know, artists are like, oh, I'm not a writer. You are a writer if you're telling a story. So uh, hopefully whatever I'm saying um, helps you out because um, storytelling is about structure, it's about pacing, and it's about emotion, getting you into the story and, and really believing and wanting to know what happens to these characters next. Um, so back to the script, back to the script of uh, hopefully uh, whatever software program you're using, you do not need to use Final Draft, okay? In fact, I'm not sure that Final Draft is honestly the best. I know it is required for TV and features. Um, I need to tell you a little bit about how comics are made and why Final Draft may not be the best choice. Ultimately, okay, unless you're this, the person. I, I, I actually learned to letter myself. Um, when you put the words on the page, that is kind of like, if you can imagine, uh, a cut and paste job first and foremost. And then, it's, then there's a little bit of graphic design uh, involved. So I'm gonna sort of, what's the best way to do this here? And I'm gonna do a little bit of a show and tell here. Okay, so I'm gonna use my, my book, first of all, because I learned I learn by doing, and that's what you're going to do. You're going to learn by doing. Uh, get all your mistakes out there first, okay? <laughs> so, actually, oh, you know what? This this is my first story I ever wrote. You know, I wrote a five-page script, and so you see here, um, this is what's called a splash page, in case you didn't know. Okay, you know, it's one panel, which essentially starts you off as establishing shot. You don't have to do this. It's just understanding this is one of your tools. It, you know, doing a splash page in a five page story is actually kind of, not kind of ballsy, but you know, you, you, I'm eating up a lot of real estate. If I were to rewrite this, I might've done this a little bit differently, um, but you're, you, you need to establish place, um, the setting, and what's going on super quick, okay? So in this case, you know, it's um, a protest with um, 
a news reporter, news reporters are great because they establish story really quickly. You can recap super quick. That's why I say you learn these things along the way, okay? Um, and then, you know, now I'm getting into uh, page breakdowns. You see, they, these are what's called panels, okay? In your script, you are going to write, basically, remember when we did the breakdown of page one, two, three, four. The next layer of writing will be the panel breakdowns. You need to tell the artist what to draw on each panel. So for me, I use the like one, 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 two, one, three. Some people do it a little differently. Um, but what's happening is that the artist needs to draw first. Maybe that's you, but anyway, um, with the description that you put in the script, which means you need to tell the artist not all the things that are going on, you know, you try to, it's best to be concise, but really importantly, what's the character doing and what are they feeling? You know, if you don't say that, the artist may be forced to make it up. Okay, and then you know, which it, it's a collaboration. Don't 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 treat the artist like a drone. Okay, it's like okay, here it is, and I have written out every single little thing. And there's a cough. There's a coffee cup in the foreground, and there's this. If it's let, let them let them build it. Let them, let them build it, you know, um, but give them enough cues of what's going on, okay? And how, how are the characters feeling? What's the, what's the relationship? Now, don't forget, while you're doing this, this five page, you don't have a lot. Um, every panel has to count. Every panel needs to move the story forward, okay? Um, so think about this with a great deal. Of, it is like a puzzle. You're working on a puzzle because you're like, okay, so I got all this cool stuff going on, but now I'm in 20 panels. It's like, hey, no, you got to break it up. Some stuff maybe has to go. Back to what I was saying is give the readers some room to breathe and let them, let them imagine stuff in between. You don't have to explain every single thing. But so here, you know, this is good. Four panels and then one, two, three. It's also four panels, you know. If you're just starting off, rule of thumb for, you know, five to seven panels is very comfortable. I have now gotten to more like three to five. Of course, it is as appropriate, okay? Now, I'm gonna take a moment to pause and say, okay, because there's always somebody who said, yeah, but Alan Moore does it this way, okay? Alan Moore is Alan Moore, okay? Um, Absolute respect, and you know he is allowed to do the things he does, and he does very well because he's been at it a long time, and he's, you know, um, most people are not Alan Moore, and um, most artists do not want to see an Alan Moore script because uh, Alan Moore, you know, he can draw. You, you, if you're working with an artist, give the artist room to work with you as a team. Explain to them what they need to know. That's 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 what a script is. So what I'm trying to say too is that don't worry about your flowery prose. Your you know, this is true for TV and features because editors, you know, um, producers need to get hooked into your story. But when you're writing comics, you are basically writing the directions to the artist. Um, maybe it gets published later on, and people are like, oh, you know, uh, my 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 scripts are very um, I don't want to say perfunctory. But I try to focus on, okay, where is it? What day is it? Very important. Like what day, meaning day or night, like what the colorist is going to need to know. Okay. Um, back to the team. You are writing not just for the artist. But when I say artist, it's actually in, in mainstream, um, you know, for something like DC. What you're doing is you're writing for a penciler, an inker, a colorist, and a letterer. So that script is for all of them and the editor of course okay so um what you're doing is making sure that they are getting the information they need to know to do the story and that involves maybe expression whether or not it's daytime nighttime and back to the script and whether doing a final draft or whatever the letterer literally has to take the document and cut and paste and then start put placing the blocks of text physically, physically, digitally, uh, usually by Illustrator, onto the um, the artwork. Of course, in the old days, you know, they cut and paste literally. I'm saying digital cut and paste, and start putting the uh, balloons together. Now, um, I took lettering, so I know exactly how this happened. It, it, this this will make you a better writer too, by the way. 
is um, knowing how much work goes behind it is, you know, you got multiple layers of balloons typically, you know, that your, 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 your average balloon, there's like one, two, three, there's like four, you know, four layers in one balloon, if I can show you. Um, so just remember that you do it in, um, uh, a non-standard software, like a PDF or whatever, you're just making life harder for everybody else because they can't do it the way they normally do it. Okay, so that's just like a little tech tech um, thing to watch out for. So back to the script itself, you know, the document itself will be, um, you know, some word processing document um, that's probably going to be shared with a whole bunch of people if you're working like that. Now, um, the find I view writing as um, is it like sculpting there's a lot of refinement as you go along I think the better way to think about this is um, say you go to a tailor and you're getting a, like a custom suit or something like that okay um, you get it all worked out. You know how a tailor works, right? They start cutting out the big pieces. They start sort of fitting it and they're fitting it and they do another fitting. That is a little bit like comics is I write the script, goes to the artist, comes back. It's not done. It's not done. Hopefully you have a little bit of back and forth. When the artwork comes back, I will frequently adjust the script because sometimes, for example, it's the um, expression is different or even better or the, the interpretation of the artist matters okay and when it comes back um it's a lot easier in some cases uh it's it's very difficult to say okay redraw the whole thing because it's not how i imagined it okay that's that's kind of not cool you know if there's any concern you talk it out first um and this is why it's super important to make sure your script is clear but when it comes back and this is the best feeling when you see the art it's coming alive it's, in fact, I just got something this morning. I'm very, very excited. Um, it, it really is the best feeling because um, I like to be surprised, and it's usually surprised in a very good way uh, when you're working with somebody. Um, I feel like, I, can I even talk about that? I probably can't. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm just, when you get something in your inbox, um, and it's fabulous, um, It's that's not the time to say, yeah, but. I don't know, you know, um, go back to your script. This is the tailoring process. Y you know, you, you fit your script now. Now we're sort of just massaging everything in. And sometimes this is just, just mechanical stuff, for example. Let's say we do this establishing shot, and now we do a close-up, okay? And the original script with the close-up had like 25 words in there. It's not gonna fit because if you, you put it in there and now it's covering the head, it, that's always like not, not, not desirable. It's gonna take the reader out of the story. You know, the main thing is keeping the reader in the story. You don't want the reader to notice all these things, you know, you don't want the reader to even notice, you know, what font it is or whatever. You just want the reader to read, okay? And when you have huge blocks of text, that's your fault, okay? That's your fault. <laughs> keep keep it down, keep it down. Uh, prose, prose writers, I'm looking at you. A, try to keep your balloons. 15 to 20 words is a nice, nice size of a balloon. Again, these, these are guidelines, not rules. But if you find that half of your panels are full of text, dial it back a little, okay? Um, and that's this is a great time to do it. When you get your artwork back, take a look at it match it up with your um, script and read it through and, you know, um, start take, taking out some words. You don't need all those words. Trust me, you do not need all those words. Sometimes I will put more words in because clarity, clarity of storytelling is maybe in that panel, it's not so clear what's happening. Um, and that's, that's, that's when you want to come back in and start adding. I find a lot of this process is subtracting, you know, Take out, take out some of the words. They don't need all that. Um, the best is, the best best comic writing is really when the artist comes back and you look at the art without the words and you can understand what's going on. That's when you know you did a good job and that's when you know the artist did a great job. That You can actually read it without even having the, the words on yet, okay? Um, so that's always a good test. If you can do that, that's that's pretty pretty cool. Okay, um, don't get too precious with your words. You are doing this together, and you wrote that. 
you wrote that, and even if there were no words on it, it's it's still writing. What you're doing is you're visualizing, and so you know, focus on that. Um, uh, and that I that's what oftentimes if if that is the case, I find sometimes I just take the I take the words out. You know, I don't want to spoil it. You know, it's like we get the drama of what's going on in that page. You know, I don't need to necessarily insert additional words that are not adding to the story. So don't remember, um, don't don't forget that a lot of this is um, what's best for the story. What is best for the story? Where are we going with this story? Okay, um, and, so, and what that means too is sometimes you need to kill your darlings. This is, this is, you may have heard this, you know, you, you get really fixated on something that's super cool, super cool. And I do this all the time where I'm like, what if, what if Red Sonia does this? Or what if Deadpool does this? And that may have been the original genesis for the story, but maybe it's evolved, it's evolved, and something is not working. Sometimes it's your darling that's not working. It doesn't fit anymore. It creates a motivation issue, or it's the why. But then why? Why Why is Red Sonia punching a shark? It's got to make sense, okay? It's cool, but it's got to make sense. So if you cannot figure out how to get to that staging point where Red Sonia is punching a shark, you got to do another pass at it or get rid of the idea. Fortunately, we kept the idea, okay? But, you know, you see what I'm saying is you, you can't just throw it in unless, I don't know, it's random, right? Okay, so... Um, we're talking about killing your darlings. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit too about just problems you're going to run into as you're doing your script, as you're doing stuff. Back to you know, getting back to this this process is um, trying to fitting everything in, um, saying motivate the blank page problem. Just get something down. Just get something down. Don't get hung up on the dialogue, don't get hung up on the character names. Placeholder, if you're stuck, placeholder. I do the dialogue last, honestly, because the dialogue sometimes is where you get stuck. You're like, don't forget what's driving the story. The visuals first, and then the dialogue, okay? The dialogue is, I'm not saying it's not important, but it's where you're gonna get hung up on stuff. And you're like, well, I gotta get this conversation right. Use it as um, the placeholder, but always remember what's going on. Why are they saying these things? Okay, so I find I will do a number of passes at the dialogue, but I leave that for later, especially after I see the art, because the art may change the dialogue slightly. Maybe they're drawn um, in a different way, or they're angrier, or you find out. Oh, uh, oftentimes I get this because I tell you know the art. art good artists will remember. It. There's got to be some space for the balloons, and sometimes there's a lot of space. I'm like, hmm you know what, I actually have more space there. I'm gonna add more to um, clarify what's happening in the story. So so that's, that's there's that, okay. Um, other things that, um, okay, writer's block. Let's, let's talk about writer's block. Um, this is, I don't, some people are like, oh, I don't believe in writer's block or, you know, I, I'm not saying I believe or, I believe we all get stuck. And we all get stuck for a reason. And um, there's no, sometimes it is this uh, why, why, why. Maybe it's the darlings that are holding you up. Sometimes I really just believe it's like we forget we we forget our beginner mind. We forget our child mind, and we, we sort of get kind of all you know. There's too many things going on. You're like I got bills to pay, got to run out, got to do these things. Um, go take a walk. Go take a walk. You know, just take a uh, even just around the block, or go take a shower. You know. Um, I think that's it's you. You sort of want to relax and reset your brain, um, and that seems to work for me. Um, in just sort of coming back at it a little bit fresh. Now, when I say that, that doesn't mean you know um, going away for a week and then not finishing it. Um, go back at it. Go tackle it. Go um, uh, look at it from a different angle. Um, maybe it does involve showing it to somebody else, but be careful. You know. You know, your your spouse, your family, your parents, maybe not the best critics, you know, because you might get kind of upset if you're, you know, or they just say, oh, no, honey, it's really great. You, you want somebody you trust who can be like, oh, yeah, yeah, but what if this or that or, you know, uh, pick, pick, pick your support group. You know, find yourself a, a good writer's group or, you know, if you're at the Cuber School, students, you know, 
I believe do this all the time. You have you have some peers who you can talk to. Um, so so look at look at doing that um, and um, and just stay productive. You know, I know there are some people who are just like, OK, what if I just park my butt in the chair nine to five, sit there and just crank it out? I find that doesn't really work for me. Honestly, it's kind of like just pounding at it. And it's just like, no, I, you know, uh, and then you get up, you go to the fridge, right? And you're like, okay, and then I got to get another snack and um, another coffee. Okay. Do the work, but also just figure out what works for you. What's the right schedule for you, but get the mileage in, you know, um, figure out what's a good spot. I go all over the place. I, sometimes I write at the school. Sometimes I write at, um, you know, back in the day, I would write at a cafe. Uh, I will move around the house too sometimes, just to just to feel slightly different, have different different auditory and visual inputs. Okay, and uh, maybe that helps me out. But whatever it is, got to keep writing. Got to keep writing, even if it's just working at a scene, working at the ending, maybe refining one of the characters, um, and then figuring out names. You know, na names are really tough. You know, you thought it was great, this cool name, and then you find out actually there are 12 characters also having the same name. Do the Google search, you know. Um, <laughs> don't get yourself in trouble and don't get too hung up on it, you know. Um, I do a lot of placeholder names and then at the end I'm like, okay, this is the right, right names for these characters. Don't let that hold you up. Don't let them, like, I don't know how they're talking yet. If you don't know how they're talking, you're not really in their space. So work work on your character description, work on the actions and start trying to embody those characters. And that's how you will get to the removing the, but why, why? If you have figured out how your characters motivate and how they behave, then the plot will be a lot more obvious and how it's going to, um, you know, pan out, so. Okay, so there's all that. Um, I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. I kind of covered a lot of ground. Um, and um, But my main thing was saying really that you can do this. You absolutely can if you want to. And maybe you just want to get it out of your system. I've been wanting to write forever and um, want to see what it's like. Absolutely. You'll also find out if you get the bug like me. Like, I can't stop writing. It's not fun. It's not fun. It's because it's always like, oh, can I do this better? Can I tell this story? Um, you'll find out soon enough that this is your thing, you know. Um, and maybe it's maybe it's not the right time for you either, or it is. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how young or old you are. Honestly, you can do this. Um, just not following the rules, but guidelines, you know. Um, don't get too worried about all these things like, uh, but I need to understand how the hero's journey works and, you know, this, that. You can read up as much as you want, but, you know, you really just need to start writing, writing your story, get it down. Um, and maybe it is just your webcomic um, or as simple as Instagram story. These are great because it's, 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 it's forcing you to think in, in small chunks and, you know, like, like running, you know. Are you going to run your marathon, your first marathon, without working up the proper mileage? Do the 5K, do the 10K, do the, you know, half marathon. Then you get to the marathon. It's practice. It's practice. So an Instagram comic, I think, is a great way to start, especially if you are writing and drawing. You'll start figuring out, well, how do I, how do I establish the characters really quickly? How do I have some kind of payoff on the fourth panel if you're doing a little square grid, you know? Or back to eight page i think these are great because you can you can get these published you know or publish it yourself um and uh and feel some satisfaction to doing that um so you know my um i will tell you it was very daunting too because i got so used to doing the 20 pages when i had to start doing the longer form like graphic novels uh so i think this was the most i ever wrote in fact it's like what 160 pages or something like that. If you think about it like that, it's actually kind of like, whoa, um, sometimes it's good to break it down. So I, I always break it down to kind of eight page scenes in a way to get, get me through, you know, and figure out where I'm going. But same thing, I basically put down, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, making sure I understand every page has a purpose, every panel moves the story forward. So, um, with that, 
what else can I say? Um, good luck to you in your journey. Uh, hopefully I can be there for you. Um, I do kind of try to sort of drop <laughs> hopefully nuggets of wisdom um, on social media. I'm on um, Twitter at Amy Chu. There, you see it. Um, uh, Instagram, you're going to get some of my food posts too, but, you know, um, hopefully I can sort of make some of it more educational. Um, my website is iwritecomics.com. And, um, and of course, the Kubert School. Uh, I, you know, if, um, when called upon, I will write, <laughs> I, will, I will teach, you know, whatever you guys need, you know, because I feel the world is a better place with more people reading, but more importantly, creating comics. You know, don't let the, it's like, oh, it's not for me. It's, it, it's this, this industry is so difficult to break in. No, you can make your own comics. You can do your thing. You absolutely can. We are in an age where there are, I don't want to say there are no barriers, but there's nothing to prevent you from making your story you, you, and, and getting it out there. You, you can do this. Um, the internet is a love, can be a crazy place, but it's a lovely place for that. It used to be that you had to go knock on a bunch of doors, go get an offset printer, print 5,000 copies and do all these things. Now, now it's exceptionally democratic. Look how many stories out there. You can be, you can be, you can get on webtoons, you can go on wherever you want, put out your stuff. Uh, so hopefully that's a call to action to you, you know, go ahead and do that. Um, you know, avail yourself of all the resources that are at your fingertips, okay? Um, most comics professionals are actually really lovely people because if we did this for money, we wouldn't be, do we wouldn't be doing this. This is, this is for love. This is, this is for the passion of, of telling a good story. So I hope that was kind of useful for you. Um, I sort of went through a lot, um, but you get the idea of my process, right? Think about it strategically. Um, I know I, sometimes I think very structurally, um, but I think that's a key to good storytelling. So you don't have a rush story. Think about your ending. Don't forget about your characters. Don't forget if you're not the artist that you need to be communicating the right things to the artist. Not too much, not too much like, okay, oh, this is not cinematography. Okay. It's not a shooting script. This is getting the bones, getting the emotions, getting the motivations down and the details as necessary so that everyone on the team can get this thing done and drawn and looking gorgeous, okay? So that's it. It's so easy, right? So I hope you can go to it. Um, enjoy the journey. Um, enjoy being a creator, you know, and, um, and we'll see you. Hopefully I'll see what you produce. Thanks so much, and I'll see you later.